Would you join me in the Pledge of the Flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Lynn, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Vanderwater? Here. Ms. Lesnia? Here. Mr. Tupper? Here. Ms. Dickman? Here. Mr. Dazinski? Here. Ms. Taven? Here. Mr. Seitz? Here. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the August 18th regular town board meeting. Moved. Second. Any comments, questions, any changes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll abstain. Motion carries. Item number one is a public hearing on Local Law A-2020, Chapter 145 of the Van Buren Code regarding property maintenance and controlling junk. Okay, I got some things I want to read here, set a few ground rules at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> so everybody's aware, this hearing and proposed code applies only to those properties in the town of Van Buren outside of the village of Baldwinsville. So if you're from the village and you're here, this does not apply to you. And same on Zoom. Okay, with the rules for meetings under COVID-19 guidelines, we can only accommodate the number of white chairs you see here um, at a time in the boardroom. Therefore, we're asking that people, once they have given their comments, leave the boardroom and building to allow the next group of people to enter and speak. We are also operating a Zoom meeting for those who could not attend in person. We are setting a three minute time limit with a two minute time extension, but five minutes is gonna be the maximum. Uh, if you can't get your thoughts out to us in five minutes, then it's time we've got to move on. And we ask that you address the board and not each other. Uh, this is a public hearing, so the board can hear your comments on the proposed code, and as such, it does not mean that the board will offer answers or comments or uh, answer questions. <laughs> Is that our feedback or is that somebody? Okay. Uh, we will leave the public hearing open until 9.15 for written comments by letter or emails. Those should be directed to the town clerk's office. The email for the clerk is clerk at townofvanburen.com. If you want to mail in a letter, it's town of Van Buren at 7575 Van Buren Road, Baldwinsville, New York. 13027. We're going to ask that we alternate between in person comments and then we'll go to a person from Zoom for comments. Uh, we ask that everyone who speaks state their name and address for the record. It's very important for follow up and for the clerk so she can get the, the minutes correct. Uh, PAC B is here taping. We appreciate Jordan being here and uh, taping the hearing so anyone can watch on their respective PAC B channel if they want to view the entire hearing and the entire meeting for that matter. Um, let's see. 9-15 you mean the date? Yes, September 15th. Um, okay, with that, Mary Francis, did you want to say something before we open the hearing? Uh, yes, we introduced the property maintenance revisions last uh, meeting. It's a uh, revision that the Land Use Committee has been working on since last August. The revisions were resulting from resident complaints that uh, the Codes Office was not adequately monitoring violating properties. Uh, one of the biggest complaints from the resident is they, that we cannot show them in explicit detail exactly what they're being cited for. New York State says you have to have a clean, safe, and sanitary property. So the point of adding the definitions was to make it more focused, clear, so that all residents of the town know what the minimal standards are. And again, uh, thank you for coming. At this point, we have 25 emails and letters uh, pretty evenly um, 13 for and 12 against so 
As Claude said, we'll leave the meeting open through, comments open through the next meeting, September 15th. That's it. Okay. With that, I'd entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting and open the public hearing to hear comments on Local Law A-2020, which repeals and replaces Chapter 145 of the Town Code relative to property maintenance and controlling junk. And I ask we waive the, the reading of the public notice. Moved. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're in public hearing mode. What I'd like to do now is uh, step up to the mic, whoever wants to be first to speak, state your name and address for the record, and uh, we'll get started, and we'll start with anybody that's in favor of the local law. My name is Mary Sullivan, and I live in 508 Crandon Terrace, Baltimore. And um, I'm definitely in favor. I, I feel that um, it, you know it's gone way too long, and um, our properties are, you know, my home. <laughs> we take so much, so many years of taking care of it, paying it off, and things like that. And then to see people that are not taking care of their homes, it brings down the value of my own house and our neighborhoods, and especially our community. So I think it's very important that we do something. Um, you know, just so that I can feel like I don't have to be embarrassed of where I live. And it's gotten to that point where I feel like I have. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, this goes through and it's everybody's favor. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go to someone from Zoom that would like to speak in favor. The Zoom. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, I have not been able to hear anything except for the first 30 seconds of the meeting. And um, from the comments in the chat section, it looks like other people had the same issue. Yeah, same here. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm Peter Wilder. Uh, I live at 105 Highview in the town of Van Buren. And I have a, a read through the law and I'm uh, pretty concerned about some of the language in the law. And uh, can I, uh, well, what I'd like to do is share my screen. The host has to uh, allow me to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if that will happen. No, he, he, he can't do that for you. So I'll refer to the, uh, to the text. And uh, the first thing I want to make a point about is at the start of the law, there's a, there's a clause that's often put into these sorts of things. And in this case, it's about conflicting provisions. And the provisions of the law shall apply in addition to the provisions of any other local law or ordinance adopted by the town. Where there is a conflict, the more restrictive provisions shall apply. The provisions of this law shall also be applicable to conditions existing at the time of enactment. I'm concerned about that, but I'll, I'll go into why in, in just a minute. I think that some of the definitions are extremely vague, uh, brush, uncultivated woody shrubs, and or immature trees. I would ask the town to consider how one grows a mature tree if it doesn't go through immaturity first. I would also like to point out the definition of noxious plants. Um, I'm going to allude to this uh, later of where the language in this bill came from. Poison ivy, poison sumac, and poison oak. Poison oak isn't even native and, and not even transplanted into this area. Poison sumac, the only place I know of, I've lived here all, almost my entire life, the only place I know where it exists is at Beaver Lake Nature Center on the Bog Trail. And poison ivy is a native plant. I, uh, it, it, it's, I really like being used as an example of a plant that's undesirable. But a lot of the language in this law suggests that if it's not desirable to a certain type of homeowner, then that's what's meant. I personally don't get poison ivy, so I'm one of the lucky ones, so it's not not just to me. 
is also a uh, it's also a food source for the near threatened bobwhite quail, which has a diminishing population. It's a native plant. Uh, many, many species uh, thrive, uh, eat, eat this plant. And uh, so what I'm trying to envision, I'm using this as an example, because I've heard that these complaints are, being, are coming from citizens about neighbors or other people in the town. So if somebody drives by my property, a concerned citizen, or maybe a board member, or a codes enforcement officer, or somebody who doesn't like the political sign I have in my front yard, and they say I have poison ivy. And so now the town is required to send somebody. I refuse to remove the plant because if you don't want my poison ivy, don't come on my property. And, and the town says, no, nope, we've got a law now. And if you don't remove this, we're gonna fine you or you can go to jail. All of this apparently while the person reporting it is uh, kept in anonymity from me. Uh, up to four days in jail, that's interesting. So the town finds me and they send somebody. They bring their systemic herbicide or Roundup or something in the same family and they spray it all over wherever they find poison ivy. They ruin my property for the wild plants that are on there, the wildflowers, other plants that I very deliberately left for, for other wildlife. And then I get charged for the service, if you will. I think this type of overreach is, is completely not necessary. We have laws and statutes about junk cars and garbage in lawns. This the language in this is completely different than that. I noticed that there's an exception, an exemption for homeowners and for things like gardens. But the clause also says, uh, as long as you're using good husbandry towards the land. And I would like to say, ask who determines that husbandry? The town, uh, the neighbor or person who doesn't like my sign? Um, is a three sisters garden considered good husbandry? I would think so because it's been a viable way of growing crops in this area for hundreds of years before Europeans ever arrived here. What about leaving a wild area for birds? Or if I want to plant beans on half of my property one year, that's good husbandry because it enriches the soil, but it actually says in the law that the, the plants that I'm growing in my garden have to be consumed in the house. This is incredibly uh, severe language. And having been a teacher for over 20 years, the first thing that popped up, I said, well, this, this clearly wasn't something written for the town of Buren. This was something that was taken from other places. So I Googled. That's what I do when students cheat. So, I Googled entire paragraphs came up from other towns, hundreds of other towns around the country. Uh, interestingly, um, the town of Clay came up and the town of Manlis came up. These are, these are curious because those towns provide services for pickup of, of uh, yard waste, hush, uh, and Christmas trees, uh, in, in some of those cases, they even negotiate on behalf of the town for the price for garbage pickup. Peter, so, Peter, what I'm worried about Peter, is that this contains language which is entirely unnecessarily severe. Peter, it puts the town in charge, and you know, I have experience once the town passes the law, when you go to the zoning board of appeals, the zoning board of appeals' main function is to maintain the status quo. That's what it says in the state of the state. Peter, and Peter, you've exceeded your five-minute limit. That the case that We're going to cut you off now, Peter. Excuse me. Yes, I'm almost done. Well, you're well over five minutes. Okay. I, I didn't know there was a five-minute limit. limit. Nobody took well, that must have been the part you didn't hear. Okay. 
We're going to move on to an in-person comment now uh, that's for it, that obviously Peter was against it. Must be he didn't hear that either. So um, someone that here in the audience would like to speak in favor? Yeah, yes. Hi, uh, Mike Sullivan. I live 508 Granite Terrace, husband of Mary. Um, I'll keep it brief. I mean, I'm not going to get into poison ivy and beans and all that, but we just, we live there. We've been there for we. 25 years. Um, and our house is paid for. We see some of the houses are run down. People are piling up junk in front of their houses, junk cars, tires, letting the grass grow five feet high. Uh, we've we made complaints. We did get good responses from everybody. We appreciate that. Um, you know, we're just, it's mostly common sense stuff. We're not getting, I know for the, the papers and the legal ramifications, you have to get technical about languages and things like that. But we're just looking for common sense, uh, you know, rules. Things like, you know, like we already talked about, uh, rubbish. And uh, some of the pictures that were, were taken were interesting. Um, but, you know, when you drive through a neighborhood, a common person will know what looks good and what looks crap. So, I mean, we're just looking for that, nothing more. And uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mike. Mike, yeah. uh, so you guys need to leave so we can let other people come in, okay? Thank you so much for coming. Okay, we're gonna go to Zoom for a person that's in favor of the proposed law. I will guess. Yes, uh, I'm Paul Dreher Weiberg. I'm sorry, I'm unable to hear you. But we can hear you. Go ahead. I can hear you, Paul. Yeah, the other folks online can hear me, but uh, I can't hear anyone in the room. Uh, anyway, um, we have a property, my wife actually and her sister have a property on Peck Road, and we have a couple of neighbors whose, uh, this has nothing to do with, with plants or anything, uh, that are basically junkyards. We're very much in favor of this law. Uh, we have made several efforts in the past to ask uh, folks in the town to, to try to do something about that, and there seemed to be no basis on which they could act. So uh, I'm hoping that if this law passes, something can be done to uh, uh, elicit the neighbors, the offending neighbors, to clean up their property. Uh, it's not just an eyesore, an aesthetic eyesore, but it has a, I'm sure it has quite a severe detrimental value, uh, detrimental effect on the property value. Um, and I am not willing to have my wife and her sister lose fifteen or twenty thousand dollars worth of value on the property should the time come when they want to sell because we can't get a junkyard in the neighborhood cleaned up. Thank you, Paul. Do we know what Paul's last name was? Dreer Wildberg. If I can just add a comment to, to, to Peter's remarks. And it's not an argument, Peter, and I hear you, but um, if I understand it, and I'm not a herbologist, but as I understand it, poison ivy spreads rather prolific, uh, prolifically, and, and a lot of people are severely allergic to it. So I would not want it growing next to my house. Uh, okay, direct your comments to the board, please. Uh, pardon me. All right, Paul, are you finished? Okay, thanks, Paul. Okay, someone in person here now for the proposed local law? Good evening. Lynn Pinto from 103 Clarewood Drive in Village Green. I am very much in favor of this law. We have a house up the street that has been under renovation for somewhere between 15 and 20 years. There's no siding on the house. Every year, the owners seem to be able to move the scaffolding from the front to the side to the back. Um, and we all know that those of us who fall upon hard times, maybe you started a project and you don't have the money to finish it. However, this house has been under renovation 15 to 20 years. And meanwhile, during this time, the property owners have built a two-story garage behind the house, which is fully sided and looks gorgeous at the end of their driveway in their backyard. So why is the house 
that is on Clarewood Drive look the way it looks, and we're 20 years at this. Also, we have a house on Clarewood Drive where there has been a boat, either a sailboat, either on the side of the house, in front of the house, behind the house, wherever it has been, it has been there for at least five to six years. The boat has a hole in it, about three foot in diameter, I'm sure it's not seaworthy. However, during the winter time when their garbage cans are overflowed, they bring the garbage out and put it in this sailboat, which then blows up and down the street all over Clarewood Drive. So I'm very much in favor of having a vehicle by which we can maintain our properties. Uh, one of my neighbors down on Birchwood remarked to me just over the weekend that Village Green is starting to look like an Oneida Lake camp. Our properties are starting to look like camps on Oneida Lake. And I'm sorry to say that I agree with that, so I would look forward to having something that we can use to get our properties cleaned up and looking like the great neighborhood we ought to be. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, someone from Zoom that's in favor of the proposed law? No one, no takers? Okay. Uh, someone here in the audience is in favor of the proposed law then? Step up to the mic, please. Give me your name and address, if you would, please. My name is uh, Anthony Vertusi. I live at 116 Cheerwood Drive, and I will agree wholeheartedly with the last speaker. Uh, there are some houses uh, very close to me who have turned up their yard basically into junkyards. Uh, since this proposal of law change has come, things have gotten a little better but they still have a long ways to go. Uh, I've lived in my house for the last 43 years, and I agree again that I have seen the neighborhood, uh, I won't say go downhill, but in need of more improvement than it did. So I would back this law 100% with no questions asked. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone on Zoom in favor? You seen any, Greg? No? Okay. Uh, anyone else in the audience here in favor? We ask that you depart so somebody else can come in because we got people waiting next door. Okay. okay. Thanks for coming. Okay. Yeah, I'm Lauren Michaels, 114 Cheerwood Drive. I'm thoroughly in agreement with the passing of this law. We've been putting up with uh, certain things and people for, like he said, 30 years, 40 years. My biggest peeve, on, as far as the maintenance, is people are buying and selling houses and they have no idea where their line is. They don't know, they have to take care of the easement. I explained that to a lawnmower guy the other day. He said, well, I've been mowing lawns for 20 years. He didn't know anything about the easement, and he was from Van Buren. So I checked with the zoning about the fences and stuff, too. They're either on the line. I guess they can be on the line, right? Yeah, they can be, yeah. But mine is, uh, it starts out away from the line, and then I don't know where it goes. He was going to check on it, but I didn't hear anything. I saw him drive by, so... Mm -hmm. I guess he's got it in his head somewhere. So other than that, I'm truly agreement for it. But like Tony says, uh, seems to be an improvement since uh, the word got out that you're going to change the law. So, yeah, the fact that my rear neighbor, he started putting dirt in the easement. I said, you can't do that. So I still got a little pile of dirt and a little grass. But other than that, uh, he's improved it. So other than that, I'm truly. I can't hear Okay. Okay. Can somebody tell me what's going on now? I, I think it's the second part of the, I don't think it's the, uh, the bill anymore. I think it's a change in zoning. Greg, do you know why no one can hear what we're saying? We have a lousy sound system for Zoom. 
Okay, I feel like this is a huge problem that people okay. are able to hear. Um, anyone from Zoom in favor? Greg, can you say that into the mic there? I have been okay. sending out messages the entire meeting. Okay, hearing none from Zoom in favor. Anyone else here in the audience in favor? We're, we're having a public hearing on the proposed local law regarding property maintenance. I'm in favor, yes. Okay, okay. what's your name, ma'am? Okay, you're in the village. This does not apply to you, Mary. It does, because it also in the town of Van Buren. Yeah, but you have village codes that uh, takes care of your property in the village. Not The town codes do not apply it within the village. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. I am not in favor. <laughs> okay, we're just taking those in favor right now, sir. Can you hold on? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like quick. <laughs> Hi, my name is Don Zappo. I'm here with my husband Vince. We lived at 119 Sherwood Drive. We also are neighbors of uh, Tony and Lauren that just spoke. I am in favor of this law. Um, I see, uh, you know, a few houses that have gone downhill. Um, we've been in the, with my parents and myself 53 years at this house, and uh, we want everything to stay, you know, good. And I don't want to see the property, you know, decrease in value. Okay. Thank I'm sorry, you. what was your name? Donna Vaco. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, man, we can send four people in. Okay, anyone else here in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this property maintenance code? Okay, seeing none, we'll rotate to people opposed. Anyone from Zoom that's opposed to the property maintenance code? I'm opposed. State your name and address, please. Yes, we've received that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your name and address, please. Scott Johnson, 119 Seneca View Drive. The, I sent a message here. I mean, if we were to get a notice, we only have 10 or 15 days to take corrective action. Most people want to take corrective action. But that is, a, due to the mail, it takes three to five days to get a, the notice. I think 30 days is, would be more fair for us to take corrective action. But you are opposed to it. You're saying we've got to get rid of cars or boats or lumber. Or, I mean, you know, I mean, trying to get this all done in three to five days, if it takes three to five days for the mail, it's a really short time. Let me just interject that in the proposed changes, that there is a 15 day grace period from the courtesy call that you get from the town asking you to get into compliance. If on day 16, you have not yet complied, that's when you would get a notification of violation and you would get yet another 15 days. So you would have 30 days to correct okay, something. Thank you very much for that. I didn't understand the way it was wrote. Okay. So you're still opposed? Mm, yeah, I'm <laughs> Uh, I feel like you want me to live in Ryerson, and that's why I don't live there. I came here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We've got two new people here in the audience in person. Are any of you in favor? Would you like to speak now then, please? Okay. You've got to step up to the mic. Give me your name and address, please. Up, up to the mic, please. I'm in 
favor. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your address again? I've been through this. My wife and I have read this. 125 Cheerwood. And understand it. And uh, it's fine with us. Okay. In all the matters. Okay. And your address again, sir? 125 Cheerwood. Cheerwood. Drive. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And this is your wife in the corner? Okay. Uh, we ask you, I guess maybe we don't have that many because we got two open seats here then, so. Okay. You want me to check with Jason? We got two seats open. Did Actually, you want to? Go yeah. ahead, ma'am. Did you want to say something also? No. no okay. 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 Okay, then uh, you can all stay for the meeting, <laughs> the rest of the hearing in the meeting then. I guess we don't have anybody in waiting out there. Okay, um, going, to, going to Zoom now, anyone in favor? Okay, anyone from Zoom that's opposed to the local law? Yes. One at a time, please. Somebody go ahead, please. Know which one is first? <laughs> go, go ahead. You're the one talking right now. Okay. Janet Gradsbeck, 24 Cremain Road. Um, I believe my husband wrote you an uh, email. Mm -hmm. And we believe that the wording is too subjective. And yes, I understand people's frustration with neighbors but i can also see where neighbors could go after neighbors with the way this law is worded um so therefore i'm opposed um thank you thank you okay anyone for the audience that's opposed <coughs> hold on we got somebody here in person first Mary Quigo, 47 Cross Country Drive, and I'm against adopting this new code. I think the current code, if enforced, works. I know I've had it used against property I own, and we had to fix it up. It also takes away too many property rights of individuals. I may not know, like how my neighbor keeps his yard, but he may not like how I keep my yard. It's not up to me or the government tell us how to do it if it's not a health or safety issue. Thank you. Thank you. Greg. And we have a Nicole Dow who's opposed. Did you send an email? Nicole Dow? Yes. yes. Okay. We did receive her email. Okay. We did receive that. Against. Okay. Anyone else? from Zoom that is opposed to the proposed code? Address? Oh. Zero six nine hundred Pack Road. I'm opposed as written. I would be willing to revisit the subject. Okay. Thank you. Anyone here in the audience, in person, that's opposed to the code? Uh, Lee T2, 32 Kilmaine Road. Um, I want to make it clear, this is the law, this is my note, so the pages here. Um, I think what we see here is what I consider an overreach of government into private property private rights. Um, <clears throat> I do not see due process. I do not see the appeal capability. The law itself is way too broad. Um, the way I read it, I go away for a week. My dandelions grow six inches in three days. Someone can make a complaint. Um, it, it, the first speaker, I can kind of hear, um, someone had Zoom going on in the room. He really went through a good list of all the loopholes. Once you open the law to that type of application, it will be used that way. The framers of our government were very, very 
specific on private property being important to society and people in general. Third, fourth, fifth, fourteenth amendments specifically talk about illegal search and seizure and due process in uh, terms of private property. This law has none of that in it. You don't go to a judge like a Miranda right. You have to go in front of a judge. You have to show that there is a real reason for the government to intrude on someone's privacy. That judge has to agree. And then afterwards, there's a, there's a way of appealing. Really not put in this law at all. This law is way too broad in its definitions of junk. Uh, anything can be junk. You also don't have the right to face your accuser. Uh, they can anonymously come in code officer can do it, and you have no idea. And now what you just have is neighbors who have different opinions of you on personal property and how it should look, be able to create issues. I don't understand why the local law is already on the books, or specific cases for really egregious issues isn't what is just addressed. This seems to be an overreach in all categories of private. Um, I think we got, but somewhat when you talk about private property and value, you're issuing some emotional <coughs> appeal to people who have been involved in the grievous issues. But it's more of a chimera here to just be able to uh, dictate to people what they should or shouldn't do. I, I think it's totally against what we talked about tolerance in society. Why are we saying, hey, my view of private property is going to be enforced upon you? Your view of private property is unacceptable. Um, the courts have time and time again set precedents in cases of private nuisance actions that unsightly, disagreeable, or irritating is not a valid argument to infringe on private property rights. And that's what we have here is, um, hey, I don't like the look of it. Well, without some sort of really good due process, that's just all words and it's an open, open can of worms. Um, so even if you as a board, which I think is full of good intentions on this, but we know where the, that road can lead to, say we're not going to apply it in that way. People who come after you, you've opened the door. And I think that we need to be very intentional on how private property rights are protected in all cases and also address the issue of egregious uh, uh, property uh, abuses. So I think that this law actually is uh, fundamentally and deeply uh, flawed. Um, the rights of property owners deserve better than a quick hearing and then, uh, or, or not even a hearing, just a quick, hey, I don't like what I see, and then you're fine. Uh, I also believe this should be on balance. Something this important should not be voted on here. If you want this law, put it on a ballot and let the 10,000 plus people of Van Buren vote on it. But we moved to Van Buren because we like the values that Van Buren has. We like the more rural, independent, private property. And it, it was said before, if I want a covenant community, I can move to a covenant community. Um, so, I'm just hoping you guys reconsider, circle back around, look at the law, take the feedback here, and I, I think it needs a real fundamental uh, redo uh, before it's put before the people who put before us. I do appreciate all of you and all the work you're putting in towards this, and I'm giving you my opinion. Hopefully it's not too rambling. Hopefully it has some uh, value. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone here in the audience wants to speak against or for? Okay, seeing none, we'll go back to Zoom then. Anyone for? Not seeing anybody, Greg? Yeah, okay, I, got, I have a couple comments in here. A time, Tom has raised that 24 domain. I oppose this as written. And with the difficulties tonight with communicating, I would ask that this is postponed until after pandemic. 
there is a person. He sent an email already, too. Okay. There's a person, all I know the name is Miller. I'm opposed and unable to turn my mic on right now. Everybody is unmuted on Zoom. They may have to turn on their own audio. And some people are saying they're difficult to hear because of background noise. That is because there's other people on Zoom with the microphones open and the making noise that the people on Zoom can hear in it. Okay. Anyone on Zoom opposed to the local law? Okay. We're going to be uh, leaving Zoom then. We're not seeing anybody for or against. Last chance on Zoom for the proposed local law or against. Okay, anyone here in the audience for or against? Just to be clear, I am opposed to the law. I gave a statement. In your name? Peter Wilder. Yeah, we, we, we got you, Peter. Thank you. Many people say that. <laughs> I'm opposed, and I've talked to you before, on the way to Kenny's Garage tonight, I looked over the houses in my lower Seneca Knoll, and just eight houses, six of us, because this is so strict, are out of compliance. Come on, guys, this is way too strict. Like the homeowners association. Y y your name? Yeah, the Hold on. Somebody's got a pallet outside your house that says free. Where's it is? They're out of cold because they're going to get a pallet in the way. Okay, and sir, what? I'm on vacation. My grass is three inches. I come back. It's over eight. That's way too short. I mean, I can understand if it's 12. Yeah, fine. Okay, sir, what's your name again? My name is Scott Johnson. Scott Johnson. Okay, we already got you. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And we got Peter already. Okay. Anyone else on Zoom for or against? Uh, yes, hello. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Kelly Rowe, 7491 State Fair Boulevard, and I am opposed to this as it is currently written. Okay, thank you for your comment. Anyone else on Zoom for or against? Feel like an auctioneer, kind of. Okay. Last time for Zoom. Anyone for or against? We don't want to cut anybody off. Okay, we're going to, anyone else on the board have any comments they'd like to make before we recess the public hearing? No, we we're leaving it open though. Yeah, yeah, we're going to recess it and keep it open. Okay, that's, I just wanted to reiterate that, 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 that we're having another public hearing on this matter in, on September 15th. Well, I, I don't know if it'll be a public hearing. We're going to accept written comments up to the 15th. Oh, I wanted to have another public hearing. That's not what was advertised. I thought that's why we were keeping this open to no. why did we find out what happened? entertain comments at the next meeting as well. Yeah, those that come in by written emails and, and letters. I would like Isn't that the way that was written, Rich? That's the way the current notice is written. Right. Yeah, we, we were planning to leave it open. But you can leave it open for public comment as well until the next meeting. It, but that's up to the board. Probably going to get but then we wouldn't want to again. recess it, right? We're just... Yeah, you would just move to keep it open until the 15th. All right. Any board members got any comments? You exist? Yeah. I would like to. Um, I've written something down 
Um, as you know, my name is Pat Dickman. I've been a realtor for over 30 years, both in Western New York and then here since I moved here 16 years ago. And knowing that, curb appeal is probably the most important item to get someone in the door to consider a purchase of your home. I've spoken with a number of fellow realtors with similar views as mine regarding the code updates we're considering. A house or a yard considered an eyesore in a neighborhood is a deterrent to another house selling. A prospective buyer may not want to live there or they will consider a nearby property less desirable and of lower value. People want to live in a town they feel is interested in helping them protect their investment. We're not talking about restrictive covenants, but code improvements to know their town has an interest in helping them maintain their property values. The current multiple listing system has up to 50 inside and outside photos and, if you'd like, street photos of a property. So it's, it's quite extensive when we put listings in these days. People pretty much feel like they've already been there before they actually enter the house itself but they don't always see the whole neighborhood. And often prospective buyers will drive by a property to view the neighborhood and see if they would want to live there. A nearby property with debris, overgrown grass, multiple vehicles, licensed or not, and generally unsightly and in disrepair lowers the neighborhood property values and conversely, an area of well-maintained attractive properties increases values in general in the neighborhood. So just wanted to offer my comments. Thank you. Any other board members that wish to speak? I'll say a few things. Um, I have been very vocal about being against the law. I feel that Van Buren has a lot of people who want to live here as opposed to say Lysander because of the freedoms we have here with our own property. I feel that the people want to live in Van Buren because the government allows them to live on their land and do what they want with their yard. Obviously, if it's a, a health hazard or something of that nature, yes, the town should step in and see how they can assist that homeowner with cleaning up their yard or whatever. I don't feel the government should be telling people they can't have unseasonal lawn furniture in their yard. They can't keep toys out in their yard. They have to put their stuff in enclosed sheds. It's your property, you pay taxes, you should be able to do it, whatever you want in your yard. If you have brakes that you need to fix on your car and you don't fortunately, unfortunately have a garage, you should still be able to repair your vehicle in your yard. Um, I encourage everyone to keep sending your comments in so we get a very clear understanding of the residents and what they want because this is your town and thank everyone for coming out and saying their piece i know that this is the first public hearing we've had since covid a lot of people still are uncomfortable being around um, other people but thank you for taking the time to come out thank you i'll say one thing um this does not prevent anyone from repairing a car in a driveway if, if that's the way people are viewing this, that is wrong. You can't take six months to repair the car in the driveway. Um, you know, you should know how long it's going to take you to do it. And, uh, but it does not prevent anyone from uh, repairing a car in their own driveway or on their lawn or wherever they feel they can do it. Um, there's been a lot of misinformation handed out. Uh, one today was that some people, there's one on tonight, that thought that they were told that this applies to people in the village, and it certainly does not. So th there's been some misinformation going around, and for that, I apologize. So. So in this law that you're proposing, it says you can work on your car brakes as long as it's within 30 days. Is it is it 30 days? Uh, I don't think there was even. I don't even think there was a, a time. Yeah. A, a, Appointed to it. But we didn't want to be sitting around for six months. Yeah. We, that's not acceptable just to change your brakes. No. Right. And again, it was the egregious uh, properties.
that have had uh, a car up on risers or whatever the jack stands um, that have been there for over a year that nothing's been done to the vehicle that is what this these definitions are trying to get across it's not taking people's ability to have whatever shrubs they want they can fix their own brakes they can change their own oil in their driveways that's fine but you cannot repair a car um, dismantle a car uh, in your driveway that's that's not allowed in your neighborhood yeah Okay, any other board members got any comments? Yeah, I would like to say that we've had zoning laws. We've had zoning laws for a long time that differentiate between residential sections, industrial sections, commercial sections, and all the rest of the business applications, agriculture and, and everything else. And all these practices are not allowed everywhere in the town. You can't grow vegetables for sale in your backyard. You can't raise pigs. You can't do a lot of things. You can't certainly uh, uh, run a garage. I've had people in my neighborhood do that. I don't live in the town, I live in the village. But it's, it's as strict there as it should be everywhere else in a residential area. It's people's homes. They don't do anything but live there and enjoy their, their neighbor's presence and uh, makes a neighborhood. When you get somebody that flouts the law and piles up old tires and things like this, and right next to your fence, I mean, I've had to build a fence myself to keep that site out of my yard, but uh, I, I think it's just a matter of mutual respect. Nobody's trying to take anybody's rights away, but if you live in the wrong zone, you can't do certain things, and that's the, that's the way it's always been. Thank you. With that, I'd entertain a motion to leave the hearing open to 915. the 15th, mm -hmm. September 15th at 7 p.m. Are we going to hear comp more verbal comments again? I think we should. I, I mean, it's. I don't have a problem with that. To the board? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, especially because of the restrictions we have to impose. I just don't want anyone to feel like they didn't have an opportunity to be heard. Okay, so we're going to entertain a motion to leave the public hearing open till September 15th, at which time we'll hear uh, public comments and Zoom comments again. And we hope that they won't be any repetitive that we heard tonight. We hope they're new people. So entertain a motion to that effect. Moved. Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're back into regular meeting time. Thank you. Thank you, people on Zoom. <laughs> um, item number two is consider application for a zone change for tax ID number 064-03-04.0, 7376 State Fair Boulevard. Uh, the application is a request to go from R40 to R15 and you have before you tonight a proposed local law B-2020. Um, um, that introduces this local law to uh, allow this application for a zone change. Um, the, to uh, the Town of Van Buren Planning Board is an involved agency for the site plan. The Town Board will act as lead agency with respect to the zone change. The Town Board will proceed on an uncoordinated basis and the proposed zone change is an unlisted action. And within this local law, it schedules a public hearing for the 15th of September, um, immediately following our public hearing um, for the uh, property maintenance code. Um, with that, I'd uh, entertain a motion to introduce local law B-2020. Moved. Second. Did I miss anything, Rich? The public hearing just for a time, 7.05. Yeah, we'll, 7 I'm certain we'll be more than five minutes, but say 7.05. We could take that one first. I don't. Oh, let's, let, let's uh, do it after. Okay. Um, Ralph, you're here tonight? That's right. 
That's what I thought. <laughs> um, Ralph, you just want to step up in the mic and tell us what you'd like to do, uh, just so the board has got a little more insight. Yeah, I'm Ralph Mills, 7376 State Fair Boulevard. I'd like to put up a uh, small pole barn. It's basically a deep three-car garage, uh, deep enough to be able to back an RV trailer into. Um, the, uh, would you like me to put something up that shows the property? Or? It, yeah, if you can tack it right up there on that yeah, board, that'd be that great. Large enough for you to be able to see, okay. The, basically, the property surrounding him is all R15, other than behind him, which is the new PUD for Traybrook, which those are, in essence, even though it's a PUD, they're R15 size lots. Stand to the side so the camera can pick up sure. your maps. <laughs> so this is State Fair Boulevard. Van S Road would be over here. Uh, Seneca Golf Course used to be here. Trey Book now. Uh, there are dashed lines on this drawing from this line over. My property drops off significantly towards the creek that's between me and the golf course, or what was the golf course. Um, about six feet to that line and about 12 feet all together. So it's a rather large lot. Uh, acre and a half, but not very buildable for most of it. Uh, so this is the proposed location for the new pole barn, which is 206 feet off from State Fair Boulevard, and uh, the property, my property line with my neighbors is 225 feet off from uh, Van S. Road. Um, and as was mentioned, my neighbors are all zoned R15, which means that they could build within five feet of that property line without an area variance or without any zone change. My property is zoned R40, which requires a 15-foot setback. So I have to either get a area variance or a zone change to be able to build within uh, six feet of that line is what I'd like to do, which is where the existing, uh, an existing garage is already. Keep it even with the existing building, okay. Yep. And that does several other things for me. One. Like I said, I'm kind of limited in where I really have a level spot. Even if that, I need to fill in about three feet on one end to get a level spot. It allows me to use the existing driveway and have a turning radius to get in there. And then this spot in the middle of the building is an old silo foundation that's about three foot thick concrete. And it means I don't have to excavate it because with a pole barn, your foundation is the poles that go around the outside. If I had to move 15 feet off that property line, it's right in the middle of that, and I'd have to excavate that. I've already spent about $3,000 on the site just removing trees and grinding stumps to make this spot, um, and I really don't want to have to take that foundation out. Uh, this is a vacant lot, even though it's R15, it's vacant, and I believe it's narrow. I was told many years ago it's too narrow to build on. I don't know if there's any truth to that. It's currently just used for gardening. It's owned by somebody that lives across the Van S Road. Uh, and then to kind of simplify the zoning map, because the zoning map is actually at least the one online, and I believe I checked with Jan, the most current is 2014. So it shows a lot of R40, but in fact, that R40 has been converted to PUD for Traybrook, mm -hmm. which is modeled after R15. Mm -hmm. Across the street is uh, loose car care yep. and the, the storage, storage sheds, yep. and that's PUD. And then all the way on this road is R15, and I'm the only piece of R40 back there. Okay. We see what you want to do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. As you know, we usually send this on to the planning board for a recommendation. Um, the plan is that they, they meet next Tuesday, so they are prepared to review it and make a recommendation to us by the 15th, so we you know we can keep the application process moving and um, maybe Ralph can get it built yet this fall. So, um, okay, so we have a motion. Um, we don't have a motion yet, right? Yes, we do. We do, okay. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay, all those in favor of um, adopting this um, local law introduction and sending this on to the planning board for recommendation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, planning board next week then. Okay. Um,
it, yeah, it's going to be just cleaner to do a zone change down there, and it, you know, there's no sense in having him be an island of R40 in the middle of all that R15. So. Yeah, it's not spot zoning then at all. No, yeah. no, no. Okay, uh, I have a pencil in number three. There's been a, a fence waiver request co come in for 707 Fairway Circle. And um, Jason has looked it over and has given it his blessing. So I'd entertain a motion to approve the fence waiver for 707 Fairway Circle. Second. Discussion? Jason? Okay, there you have it. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, Councilor Committee Reports and Comments, MF. Uh, nothing at this time. Okay, who have I got? Darcy. I'll just reiterate Wendy's comments from earlier. Please keep sending comments about the property maintenance law because we really do want to hear from the public on this to make sure we get it right. That's it. Wendy. Nothing. Pat. I'd just like to thank our town committee, um, Ron and Howard and Mary Francis in charge, that have spent a year putting this together. And one of the earlier comments on Zoom was that he had Googled and found excerpts from different towns. That's very often how, when we're trying to write something, we go and see other places where it's part of their code and it has worked. Um, and an awful lot of this is New York code also. We were just trying to clean things up and get some definitions in there. Uh, but I'd just like to commend them on all the time that has gone into this. And we still welcome, of course, public comments. Um, it's one of those things that you're never going to please everybody. Um, we've already got like half and half pros and cons, so it, it's a difficult thing. And primarily, codes officer is going to react and visit properties where there have been complaints. He's not driving around picking this person and that person because it looks unsightly. We're reacting to other people who have found that it's a problem. Granted, you may end up with somebody who has a gripe against their neighbor, but I think by and large, it's going to be places that are unsightly and they feel it's a deterrent to their own property value and it gives some teeth to the town to be able to do something about it. So, thank you. Uh, I have nothing except a high hope that the Senior Center will soon be able to reopen. That's all. Doug was excused tonight. Uh, Ron, Ron. Oh, I'm sorry. Forget you over there. I would like to thank everybody for coming in and your comments, and we will take them. Please give them to us so we can work on this. Okay. Uh, the only comment I have is if you haven't filled out your census paperwork, please do so and get it in. It's very important. Uh, federal funding uh, is predicated on uh, the census and. Uh, we need to have you uh, do that and get it in. Uh, it helps uh, every level of government for funding. So take care of your census paperwork, please. Um, citizens' comments. Anyone wishing to address the board? Uh, I haven't heard anything recently about the closing of the through, uh, bridge over the New York State Thruway, Canton Street Bridge, and I certainly hope that the board members are working with the county and state to keep that open. I think it's a very dire safety issue for anybody that lives south of the thruway for the whole town fire and everything considered. Yeah, we're working with every agency, the, every business over there, the assemblyman's office, uh, Congressman Katko's office, the county executive's office. Uh, several people from Warners have sent letters. We passed a board resolution um, I know Cisco and Sabre Demolition over there have sent letters. The uh, school uh, slash church and Warners have uh, several of their people have sent letters regarding that. It is very important to keep that bridge open. The only thing we've received back from the Thruway Authority is that they've 
received our, our resolution and they will keep it in mind in their deliberations basically was all the letter said so um, very important to keep that bridge open like you said Mary for fire and ambulance and, and the, the throughway authority should realize that a lot of the ambulance calls that Warner's responds to is on the throughway and, and that's their most direct route to get there uh, rather than having to turn left and go down around the horn and then come back and then go down to the service area to get on it just uh, I don't know they're kind of not going to help themselves in that respect so anyone else citizens comments okay seeing none Jason you got anything else okay rich okay uh, with that entertain a motion to adjourn to September 15th 2020 at 7 p.m. didn't ask Lynn <laughs> she never had any. you got anything tonight <laughs> motion to adjourn <laughs> second all those in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carries thank you all for coming